Hi, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for watching and for subscribing. And if you're just visiting, please consider subscribing. So we're continuing with my fragrance collection series and today it is part four and this is going to be a second to last part. Part five will conclude this series. So if you haven't watched any of the other videos in this series, I'm going to link them in the description and somewhere up here. Now, this part is going to start with the letter M. And I have more fragrances from houses starting with this letter than any other letter. There are so many. The first one I'm going to mention is the house of Mancera. And I have five fragrances from this house. Let's start with Sicily, which is probably my number one from this house. This is an amazingly juicy, sweet orange scent. It's like it's a freshly peeled orange. The peel is still uh, here. You haven't thrown it out. So you get a little bit of tartness from that, but overall very, very juicy, sweet orange. Absolutely love this one. One of my favorite citrusy scents. The second one is another one that I really love from Mancera. This is called Juicy Flowers, but in my opinion, it should be called Juicy Fruits. This one is really about fruits. There are a lot of red berries uh, with some other fruits. Yes, there are some florals in here, but they're really in the background. Of course, there is musk as with any other uh, Mancera fragrance, but it's really nice, gentle type of musk, just a sweet explosion of red berries. Gorgeous. Next one is called Musky Garden and it comes in the most beautiful bottle. And this one really is like a musky garden. Um, this is like you have a bouquet of flowers that's not very fresh, that has been standing there for a while. You know, the, the petals are starting to fall down and beside it you have a bowl of different fruits that also has been standing there for a while. You know, there are juices flowing from it. So uh, fruits and flowers are not fresh, but they're not bad yet either. It's like it has a little bit of a fermented feel, but in a really nice way. This is really sensual type of scent. Um, I would say fruity floral. The next one is Holidays. And this is your typical uh, beachy coconut sun and lotion type of scent, kind of similar to Tom Ford's um, Eau de Soleil Blanc. Um, and when I mentioned that Tom Ford didn't last long, this one has a much, much better performance. So if I'm looking for a scent like this, or if you're looking for a scent like this that has good performance, I would definitely go with Holidays over Tom Ford's uh, Eau de Soleil Blanc. And the last one that I have from Mancera is Wild Fruits. So the other ones were 120 mils. This is 60 mil bottle. And this one has the note of Conquat, I think. There are some uh, fruits and citruses in here as well. Of course, musk again. And this is um, not very sweet, fruity scent. This one is definitely very unisex in my opinion. Kumquat is quite strong in here. You also have some um, citruses, but they're not very juicy or not very zesty. Maybe it has a touch, a touch of powderiness. Another really great citrusy scent for the summer. Next house, starting from the letter M, is Mercedes-Benz, and I have Club Black for Men. I think that's the full name. You know that I've raved about this fragrance ever since I got it. So this fragrance is really about sweet, boozy, slightly smoky, slightly woody vanilla. Uh, to me, this reminds me of Spiritual's Double Vanille from Guerlain mixed with Deluxe from Tatiana Terenzi. If you put the two together, you kind of get this. Um, I think this is a really high quality fragrance. It really, to me, it, it has niche quality to it. So uh, this is very affordable. I, I think it's discontinued. I'm not sure, but 
If you enjoy kind of boozy, sweet vanilla scents and you see this one, definitely give it a try. This is marketed towards men, but it is definitely, definitely unisex. Women can pull this off very easily. Next, we have the House of Marc Jacobs, and I only have one fragrance here, the one that I have spoken about so many times. This is Rain, a fragrance that smells like the air after the rain or um, grass or flowers after the rain. Um, it has very aquatic, very serene feel to it. I'm not a huge fan typically of aquatic fragrances, but this one is very, very special. Um, I think more people need to talk about this one. Really great, relaxing, serene type of fragrance. The next house is Madonna, and this is my second uh, celebrity fragrance in my collection. This is Truth or Dare Naked. To be honest, this is not a scent that I reach for almost ever <laughs> and um a scent that i really didn't like at the beginning oh and i've grown to appreciate and like this is a very hyped up scent um very hard to find scent and i think that's really the reason why i keep it in my collection and it has kind of powdery tuberose slightly boozy feel uh to me this is kind of vintage a little bit and it's just overall not my type of scent there is something about it that i find over the top overpowering so i'm not quite sure why i still have it but i have it in my collection for now we will see how long it will last next let's go to the house of mikalev and i have two fragrances from this house the first one is not even me a fragrance that has been on my wish list for a long time and that i finally purchased not that long ago this is also a sweet boozy slightly smoky vanilla this one has a very sweet and very creamy buttery base i would say um really good performance uh really nice sweet boozy vanilla the second one from this house that I have is Ylang in Gold that comes in this beautiful bottle, beautiful juice, although it does leave kind of uh, gold sparkles or shine on your skin when you spray it. So beautiful to look at, but kind of unnecessary. And this is another one, a beachy coconut type of scent. There's definitely a very strong note of ylang ylang. So I would say it is more on the floral side. Yes, it has that suntan lotion, coconut, beachy vibe, but um, floral nuances are definitely very strong here. And, and this one also, I would say, is very buttery, creamy. Next, let's go to my current house obsession, and that is the House of Mammal. I have four fragrances from this house. The first one is Granada, and out of the four, this is probably my least favorite, and that is because this is a very heavily floral scent, heavily white floral scent. There is orange blossom in here, which is very prominent in the opening with a little bit of sweetness, and then when it starts drying uh, down, um, jasmine is coming out very strongly. Jasmine is really nice, not in doll, a clean type of jasmine, but it is still jasmine. It is very strong. Orange blossom is still there, although uh, kind of lighter. Really, jasmine plays the key role in here, and there is still a little bit of sweetness in here, but it is not very sweet. For those that enjoy white florals, I think this is a stunner of a scent. For me, I struggle with white florals. And so I do like this scent. I can wear it. I can pull it off, but it is not a love for me yet. So I'm not done sort of uh, experimenting and playing around with this scent yet. So it is staying in my collection for now for sure. But we don't know if it's going to stay in my collection permanently or long term. We will see. The second one, on the other hand, was Love at First Sniff. As soon as I tested it, I knew I had to have it. This is Sintra. And by the way, all the bottles from this house are just art. It's just like pieces of art. They're so, so gorgeous and so unique. So Sintra. 
This is about orange blossom as well, but it is very different here. It is very sweet, sugary orange blossom, um, reminiscent of Love by Killian, kind of done in the same style. But what we also have here is neroli and pettigrain, which make the opening of this fragrance very green and almost a little bit bitter, but in the best possible way. And they kind of stay there um, uh, through the duration of this fragrance. Definitely not as strong as in the opening, but that sort of greenness is always there and it tones down the very sweet orange blossom a little bit and makes it kind of different and kind of interesting. Absolutely love this one. For all of you that enjoy sweet orange blossom, you must try Sintra. Next one from Memo is Tamarindo. And to me, this fragrance is mostly about pineapple and patchouli. Pineapple in here is very fresh, very young, almost green and kind of um, not fully ripe pineapple. And then patchouli is here as well, adding a bit of um, earthiness to this scent not overly sweet, definitely unisex. This is a great kind of refreshing fruity scent for the summer. Again, not overly sweet. And the last one from this house, which was actually my first purchase, is Winter Palace. Another one that I fell in love with as soon as I tested it. Um, this is about tea, pomegranate and orange. So you do get a tea vibe in here. It's not very strong. And orange in here is very, very interesting orange. It is very juicy and zesty on one hand, and it is very sweet and candy-like on the other hand. And this combination of this zesty, juicy orange with kind of a sweet candy-like orange is amazing, mixed together with um, tea and pomegranate. It almost has a little bit of a fizzy, sparkly quality. This is absolutely gorgeous. Again, a must. Next house that I have starting from M is the house of Mugler. And I left this one to the end of this letter for a purpose because my Mugler collection is quite substantial. Okay, so the first two that I have from Mugler are the two Angel Muse. This is the EDT, this is the EVP. They are relatively similar. This one has a uh, passion fruit with patchouli and some other notes. And this one is um, hazelnut spread with patchouli. Both are very strong, very sweet. These are powerhouses, you know, some people love them, some people really don't. Um, I would say maybe this one is more suitable for cold weather, this one more for warm weather because this has a fruity touch, but overall really they can be worn anytime. Do you need both? Probably not. Uh, they are similar, but at the same time, they do have some different nuances. Next one is Womanity. I think this is the EDT. I could be wrong. And this fragrance is really about fig and caviar, and it really smells like fig and caviar. It has that kind of a sea ocean type of smell. Some say it smells like fish. To me, it doesn't. Definitely unique, definitely not for everyone. Do I really wear it? No, but I'm kind of keeping it for now. And that's kind of honestly the running theme with my Mugler collection. You know, um, none of the scents that I'm gonna show you from Mugler are really the ones that I reach for a lot. I really don't. But I, for some reason I have this, I don't know, fascination with this house. And so I have this, I don't know, a little sub collection inside of my big fragrance collection of Mugler fragrances. Um, again, I am keeping them for now, but you know, someday I might change my mind and decide, well, I'm not really using them. What's the point of keeping them? We'll see. Okay, the next one is in this red bottle, which I always mess up the name of this. I I think this is called Innocent Rock. I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, I'll put the title down here. Um, this is similar to Angel, but patchouli is not as strong in here. And there are a lot of red berries in here. It is kind of a, a fresher, lighter version of Angel. 
Next, I have Alien Essence Absolute, very coveted fragrance, discontinued, hard to find. So many people rave about it. Um, that's probably, again, the only reason I have it. Not my favorite. It has the angel DNA. Uh, it also has uh, vanilla in it. It has amber, so it is sweeter. It is deeper, sort of more resinous type of alien. I definitely enjoy it more than the original Alien because I cannot do the original Alien, but uh, still not my favorite and the one that I rarely reach for. Now, I also have two flankers um, of the Alien and I do enjoy these ones a lot more. The first one is Extraordinaire, I think. Um, <clears throat> again, I, I <laughs> can't remember all of these names that well because I don't wear these fragrances very often, but this is a lighter, more citrusy uh, type of um, alien. I think it has maybe night blooming flower. I could be wrong, but it definitely has kind of a fresher citrusy vibe and I do enjoy this one. And the one that I like even more is Flora Futura. Uh, this one is kind of floral, green. It has some ambery notes in here. And again, this is a lighter, fresher um, alien. I don't even remember if um, Jasmine is actually included in here. So you can sort of recognize the alien DNA, but again, it, it's a lot more wearable. Now, of course, with that comes um, worse performance. It's not as strong. It doesn't last as well as the original alien, but that's okay for me because like I said, I cannot pull off the original. Now let's move on to Angel and really out of all of the Mugler fragrances, Angel uh, line is my favorite. So I have this Angel EDT. Now again, the original EDP I cannot pull off. It's too strong for me, but I do enjoy the EDT. This is again lighter, patchouli is still here, very strong. And then you have all these fruity gourmand notes. So you have strong patchouli, strong gourmand notes. This is the original gourmand fragrance that started uh, this whole movement in, in the fragrance world, I think. So it's really nice. Again, I have to be in the mood to wear it, but I can actually pull it off. Next, I have these two discontinued angels. The first one is something to do with liquor. Uh, basically, this is your angel with liquor notes added in. So it's a boozy angel. The other one is called Taste of Fragrance. And this is the one where cacao was added to it. So it's just a little bit... Um, more sweet, slightly cacao coffee type of angel. Again, both of these I think are discontinued and kind of hard to find, but if you run across these, they're nice. And let's end my Mugler collection with the three stars that I have. First one is also Cray. Um, really, really love this one. Probably my favorite out of all of these stars. This one has the note of, I think, meringue in it, which makes it really, really sweet um, and kind of tones down the patchouli a little bit. So I do enjoy this one quite a bit. The next one is Eau Corsier from 2019. This is the one that has mango added in. And as I mentioned before, I kind of struggle with this one. Uh, and I didn't at first when I got it, but for some reason later on, I started struggling with it. I find something in this one a little bit um, overwhelming and overpowering when I wear it. I just can't pull it off. So, you know, again, I have it for now, but we'll see what's gonna happen with my Mugler collection in time. And the last one that I have is Eau Corsier 2020. This is the one that has fig added in. I do enjoy this one more than the mango one. For some reason, I don't find it as overpowering. For some reason, patchouli is kind of toned down in this one. Maybe it's the additional fig that does that. I am not sure, but definitely uh, I prefer this one. Next letter is the letter N. And the first house starting from the letter N is Nasomato, and the fragrance that I have is Barra Onda. This is an amazing boozy scent. Uh, it has whiskey in it, it has rose, umbroxan, I think some woody notes. 
uh, to me, it really smells like uh, sweet dried fruits with fermented red wine. I know it says whiskey and maybe to some it smells like whiskey, but to me, I'm not a fan of the smell of whiskey in real life and I don't get it here. Like I said, I get really fermented red wine with a mix of uh, dried, sweet dried fruits. Um, this is for those that really enjoy boozy scents. This is the booziest scent that I have ever tried. I really love it, but I know that uh, some find the boozy element a little bit too overwhelming. So I think it's better to try this one first. The next one is Nina Ricci, and I have the original Le Extas. At some point, I had a few other flankers of this one, but I found them all relatively similar and didn't feel the need to keep all of them, and this was my favorite. This is a fragrance created by Francis Kirkajan, and it is basically your sweet, jammy rose. I think there is raspberry in here as well that adds a bit of fruitiness and even more uh, sweetness just strong jammy rose, uh, the type of scent that I would reach for in the cold weather. Next, we have two of my top favorite houses. The first one is Nishani, and I have two fragrances from this house. My first love, love that's still going strong, is Ani. To me, this is a masterpiece fragrance, uh, a fragrance that has the most stunning, interesting vanilla. Uh, the opening of this scent, I think, can put off, put some people off because it is uh, zesty, maybe even a little bit uh, spicy. It is definitely fresh. There is a strong note of ginger in here, some citruses as well. I absolutely love that burst of freshness in the opening. And then the contrast to that is when it starts settling down into this beautiful, creamy, smooth, buttery vanilla that's that's sweet but not overly sweet such an elegant sophisticated type of vanilla like i said to me this is a masterpiece the other fragrance that i have from this house is 100 silent ways and i love this one as well this was a surprise to me because there are a lot of white florals in here we have jasmine um <clears throat> tuberose, uh, gardenia, I think is here as well. And of course, these white florals are balanced and supported by, again, this amazing vanilla. Vanilla in this one is much, much sweeter than uh, vanilla in Ani. And just this amazing combination of sweet and white florals, somehow it works. And again, this is gorgeous. The next house I love just as much. This is Nobeline 1942. And again, I have two fragrances from this house. At some point I had more, but there are a couple that I decided to declutter. But the ones that I have now are absolutely amazing. First one, of course, La Danza de la Lubelu. Did I pronounce it correctly? Maybe. But I call it Dances of the Dragonflies, which is the translations of the name. This one, you know how much I love it. I've spoken about it so many times. Uh, this is warm, creamy apple pie with cinnamon. It is so delicious. There is something so special about this scent. I mean, there are many scents out there that sort of have that uh, sweet apple pie feel, but to me, there's something very special about this one. Um, I never purchase backups and I have a backup of this scent, which is very, very unusual to me, but um, this is how much I love it. And the second one that I have from this house is Perdizion. This is a newer acquisition. This is in that uh, category of sweet orange blossom. Orange blossom is in here. There are marshmallows in here. There's vanilla. There's also a neroli and pedigree, I think. This is probably the closest scent that I have smelled to Love by Killian. Definitely very, very sweet, especially in the dry down marshmallows are right there. Very sweet. But, you know, orange blossom is obviously there as well. To all of you that enjoy Love by Killian or this type of scent, this is a great one to try. And now we're moving on to the letter P. First house, starting from this letter, is Pakura Ban, and I have one fragrance, the original Olympia. I have tried a few other flankers. I had one, 
but I felt like all of them again were quite similar and this one is enough for me and the, this is the one that I like the most this is salty vanilla that's really what it is it has kind of a a fresh vibe like a a little bit of a almost an aquatic vibe I, I i want to say because it smells it has the smell of fresh air together with uh salt and vanilla i really like this one the next house is Profumum Roma. This is my first fragrance from this house. This is Soriso. Really, really curious about this house, but it is quite uh, hard to find and it is extremely expensive. So haven't tried anything else for now. This is a very, very nice chocolate scent. Uh, there's chocolate in here. Uh, there might be vanilla for sure. Might be Tonka. I think there is... Um, bitter orange in here as well and this is chocolate that's not overly sweet at all in fact it, it doesn't have a lot of sweetness uh at all it, it, it surprised me when i tried it for the first time i was expecting it to be sweeter but this is definitely not very sweet chocolate is very prominent it is very creamy and buttery and then definitely there is a little bit of orange in here. Very unisex type of chocolate scent. I think for those of you that enjoy chocolate but don't want very sweet chocolate, this is a good one. Next house is Prada. And I have one scent from this house. This is Soleil Ozenis from their private collection, I guess. This is a scent that is about peach, spices. Uh, there are some florals in here as well. Um, it is peachy, but not very peachy. Um, it sort of has that maybe slightly fuzzy peachy quality. I don't know if that makes sense to anyone, but that's sort of how I see it. Um, I'm not a huge fan of peach in the fragrance, but the peach in here is really, really nice. There are a lot of spices here. Um, it is also kind of creamy and kind of thick. This is not your light, airy, fruity scent. This is very deep and thick uh, fruity scent. Very interesting. Um, definitely has some florals in here, maybe coconut as well. Um, it has a slight tropical vibe to it as well, I would say. But definitely peach is front and center. So very interesting peach scent. Next, we have the house of Penhaligons. And I have two fragrances, both from their portraits collection. I have Changing Constance, and I think this is Ruthless Countess Dorothea, I think. Now, both of these are gourmands, and they're somewhat similar. I would say this one is more smoky, uh, more honey-like. I think there's either honey or beeswax in here. Whereas this one is more about caramel and tobacco. Oh, again, tobacco is not very strong. So both sweet gourmands. I would say that this one is probably more mass appealing. Uh, I know some people definitely struggle with this one. Now, as we all know, this line suffers greatly from performance, um, especially changing constants. It really doesn't last at all. Um, Dorothea uh, is a little bit better. I mean, it's still nothing um, great, but compared to Changing Constance, it lasts maybe an hour to two more. So beautiful scents, but please be aware that performance on these is not good, especially uh, on in this one. Changing Constance doesn't last at all, but scent profiles are stunning. Now, last house, starting from P, is Parfums de Marly. And again, I have two fragrances from this house. Of course, the beautiful Delina. Uh, this is lychee, rhubarb, um, rose, uh, smooth, sweet, a little bit tart, a little bit sour, outstanding rose. Now, I have tried uh, the other flankers. I do enjoy all three. All three are nice, but to me, the original one is my favorite. The second one that I have from, from Parfums de Marly is Meliora. And this is a scent that's about black currant. There are also some red berries in here. There is musk. And this is just sweet black currant. Um, 
really beautiful one of my favorite blackcurrant scents uh, some people compare it to amethyst from lalique to me i can't make that comparison yes both are about blackcurrant but um lalique amethyst which is a fragrance that i actually had and decluttered uh, i just couldn't wear it it's very sharp it's very it's a little bit chemical it's not well blended and this one is very smooth, well-rounded, well put together, just beautiful, sweet black currant. And this is going to be the end of part four. I will see you soon in part five, which is again going to be the last part of my fragrance collection. So if you enjoyed this video, please remember to give me a thumbs up and subscribe, and I will see you soon in the next one. Bye!